This is musicians in bars getting beer. Yes, very at, much so. At a very special location. We're at Biff Naked's place. That's right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. My name is Biff. Do you want to go way back in your history and say how you got started? Well, you know, I never wanted to be a vocalist ever. I was a theater major in University of Winnipeg, and I was in musical theater, but it was just a coincidence. And these guys in, you know, my social scene uh, had a band that was a world music band called Jungle Milk, and they had like five female vocalists and 13 drummers, and they, they did a lot of different... Uh, Music, they did uh, music from Senegal, they did music from the Caribbean, they did music from uh, India. It was amazing. It was a very nurturing introduction into musical performance. And uh, one of the drummers had a punk rock band. And their singer, you know, fled the coop and they needed a, another singer, so I stepped in. And as they say, the rest is history. Started uh, touring with that band called Gorilla Gorilla out of Winnipeg. And we moved to Vancouver, and then I joined Chrome Dog. That was uh, a little more of a thrash band. And then at, after that, I, I uh, was in a band called Dying to Be Violent uh, for a very short time, which included my drummer now, named Chico Miss O'Malley. And, uh, and then I became a solo artist. So my first record came out in 1994. I formed my own record label because no labels would put out a girl with tattoos in Canada at the time. They didn't want to. And so we just had to make our own company and do it ourselves, which is what we've always done. Wow. We just licensed it. And um, they told me girls with tattoos couldn't get on the radio. And so I said, okay, I understand. But I had a manager that said, no way. I'm going to get this girl on the radio. And, uh, and that's it. We've just been working for 30 years. I've I've toured everywhere. I love it. I still love playing music, and we just did new music, and it's still exciting and fun. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever stop. That's great. Is Chico the only one you've brought from way back? Well, solo artist kind of equals orphan. Mm -hmm. So you know, basically, whatever guys that I knew in other bands that were available would come on whatever tour. Uh, but to, now I've been playing with Chico for a number of years, and yeah, it's like we're both 21. Again, nothing has changed at all, and, and so I really, love, I really love playing with Chico. Are there any other band members that you'd like to talk about? Well, so I also am very lucky because my husband is my guitar player, Snake Allen, and um, we had a side project also called Snake in the Chain, um, and that's fun too, but he accompanies me acoustically, and so when we do our national acoustic tours, it's it's nice for me because I get to travel with him and, uh, and I torture him on stage. I just torture him. I talk about his mother <laughs> and I just like drive him crazy and it's funny. And uh, I, conf I make confessions to him in front of the audience and then we'll, I'll read a story from the book and then we'll play a song and then I'll cry or I'll pretend to pick a fight with him on stage. And he's, people know he's very shy and quiet. Uh, so, of course, that makes it even funnier because he doesn't react and I kind of fall apart, you know, but it's theater, basically. Yeah. Nowadays, to release music and, uh, you know, not, not, not everyone can be Drake, I always say. You know, when I, when I talk to young artists, you can't, not everybody can be Drake and have like, you know, just kind of like drop a single and then it's like, <laughs> you know, you get to eat for another year. It's not how it works. Uh, so. The rest of us still like the element of surprise and the build-up. And so you want to prepare everybody for the big surprise, the big reveal of a release, because it's songs that you've worked on. And uh, we are just in mix. We've recorded a, uh, a new group of songs to make a record. Um, I've made lots of music in the last 10 years, but we haven't really uh, been that motivated to actually, you know, Put anything out. I, I wrote a dance record in 2010. We put out an acoustic record in 2012, um, and then I wrote a memoir, which came out in uh, finally in 2016. And then we toured that memoir nationally twice, and and shrouded it in an acoustic show, which is a three-hour long show every night, and it's great. We laugh, we cry. I love it. Uh, and then summertime seems to be lots of rock tours. 
And then finally we have a new record uh, that's going to hopefully come out before the snow falls. And uh, we're mixing that now. And I have a new book of poetry. Wow. Brilliant. So you, you kind of need something tangible to tour. Uh, something to promote. That's at least how I like to do things uh, so that you can have a focus or a purpose to the tour. And so the tour is coming as well. From your mouth to God's ears, the tour will come. And, uh, and yeah, I can't wait. We just got home a few weeks ago from our summer shows, so it'll be good to go back out again. Wow, that's cool. Um, so since you've been playing for 30 years and you've been all around the world doing it, do you want to tell us about some of your favorite gigs that you've had? Well, in the early days, some of the favorite gigs that I had was uh, obviously playing with other bands that I was in love with on the bill. So uh, both my band Gorilla Gorilla and my band Chrome Dog both had the opportunity to play and open for Bad Religion a number of times and, uh, and both got the chance to play with Fishbone uh, a couple of times and that was the era, you know, those were uh, the bands that were our heroes but, but for me, the shows that I was able to do with bands like DOA or, um, you know, I was able to sing on a record with SNFU, stuff like that will still always remain no matter what else I've ever done, gold record, doesn't matter, you know, TV shows, I don't care. The fact that I got to, to play with DOA or, or sing on an SNFU record remains probably my shining, shining thoughts, you know. It's just, I was so uh, happy to play with my heroes, and that remains true today. That's great. What about Bucket List? What's next? Oh, my bucket list is huge for, for uh, things that I want to do. Um, or creatively, I suppose. Uh, I was just able to do a, uh, uh, a hip-hop song with a, an artist called Decisive for a series called Cypher. It was a video uh, series that we did, and that was a thrill. I really, I really enjoyed that because, you know, it's couplets, rap, it's couplets, it's poetry. Love it. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. But I think that collaborating with other artists um, is really the spice of life, and that's that's something that is always a, a real honor to do, and that's why we work so hard, so that someday, you know, some other artist that we're a fan of will want to do a song with us, and so, you never know what, what could happen. I always like writing with everybody. Open-ended. Always. <laughs> always, yeah, I love uh, it. Little Fair 20 years ago, uh, could it happen today is always what I think, and I think today if Little Fair happened, it would be, uh, bigger and better. I think that the way society is today, how inclusive everyone tries to be, people endeavor to be uh, a little more, I guess, you know, they want to be diverse on a, on a bill, uh, as you know, booking bands and whatnot. Um, I, I think that it can happen again today. I think it was very special. It was a magical time. In 1999, I was very impressionable. And uh, we were on tour in America with the cult at the time and would hop off the cult shows and go join the Lilith Fair shows when we could. And nice. uh, and it was just magic. It was so much fun. Was that the busiest period of your career so far? No. <laughs> it wasn't actually the busiest period of my career. It just tends to, uh, any band will tell you that it, when you're on a tour, you know, if you have the right agent, you're going to get tours booked while you're still on this tour so you can just keep going. And it's like leapfrogging onto other, other places in other territories, other countries. Um, probably the busiest I was was I don't know might still be coming, but at the same time, uh, at one point I was doing a martial arts TV show in Costa Rica and Russia, no and touring in Europe, and touring in the States and Canada, all in the same six month time frame, and that was busy. Uh, when was that? Uh, that was probably, uh, I would say, probably two months before I was diagnosed with breast cancer, okay. uh, which couldn't have come at a more inconvenient time, as they say. Uh, but I loved it because it was my cancer vacation, which is a whole other topic. Uh, but I had never had a vacation before, so I was due for a vacation, and that's how I looked at it. You're segueing this yourself, so I don't want to interrupt this. Why don't you okay. go right into the challenges um, first? Well, because... I mean, no, nobody is prepared, whether you're a, a man or a woman or a kid or a parent, you know, when you're diagnosed with cancer, probably your 
in the middle of working, you probably have a busy family, you know, life is busy for everybody. It's never a good time uh, to get cancer, which is kind of like, you know, getting in a car crash, you know, it, it totally upsets the apple cart. And for me to have breast cancer um, was a, a really transformational thing, because again, like Corona's Fair, uh, being transformational, I had just been on these sweaty dude tours and was busy and uh, to be thrust into the world of breast cancer treatments, I was only with other women who were going through breast cancer treatments also. Uh, so there was something really um, transformational about that for me psychologically because it was like finding a sorority. Now, granted, if I would have been on tour with L7 or Belly my entire career, I would have also had that sorority, but it's never the case. Uh, so breast cancer was definitely uh, a real transformational time. And, and the energy of women uh, really sometimes helps you out as, as a woman, speaking as a woman. I've had tattoos since I was 18 years old. That's what I tell the kids. Uh, and I've always been getting them. This one here, um, I got in Amsterdam at Hanky Panky's by Morbella. Uh, and uh, it was green Tara, and at the time I was really into Buddhism and, and stuff, and I still am, you know, a lot of my tattoos are uh, deities. Uh, being born in India, I have a real connection. Uh -huh. uh, I have a connection to Hindu uh, deities. I have a connection to Hare Krishna through just Krishna core and the punk bands that I listened to growing up. Uh, but as I got older and still get tattoos, I find that now I am very whimsical about it. I don't I don't know why. Now I think it would be funny to get like my little pony neck tattoos because it's ironic, you know, it makes people laugh. Uh, but Snake tends to doodle on my uh, my day timers. Oh. I draw uh, and keep a journal uh, to keep my schedule and he'll draw doodles on it. And so I keep them, I cut them out and then I keep them. And I don't tell him, I go get him tattooed. This one is his name and this one is a knife that he drew on my daytime, I just got it tattooed there, and this was uh, just a little a little hand there with the horns up, and uh, and so now I find that the older I get, the the more the more I have a sense of humor I have about tattooing, That's and great. now it's easier. Anything goes. Considering it was a part of your history, was absolutely. Pretty, pretty and when we were young, you know, you walked into every tattoo shop, and it said no hands, no face, and now. <laughs> Everyone's got their face tattooed. We see a girl in our elevator all the time. Nice girl. I think she's a dental hygienist. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. She got a full face tattoos. I'm like, you broke out of jail. Look at you. No offense, but I mean, and she's uh, she's a very nice, polite young lady. But that's, that's right. just fashion. That's fashion. That's right. Yeah. So shy. Okay, <laughs> this is Snake. Uh, this is Steve Snake Allen, my guitar player. But I also like... You know, strong armed him into marrying me, so I get to torture him. It's part of the deal. Yeah. Uh, and I'm telling everyone today about his kiss tattoo because if you think you're a kiss fan, you don't even know half of it. This kid's a kiss fan. And so this tattoo was done uh, by none other than a very famous tattoo artist right here in Toronto named Ronan Gibney. And he owns a tattoo shop called Imperial tattoos it's over on Dundas and uh, Ronan designed this I mean look at the pyro you know this section here is called the ditch and I I don't have my ditch tattoo you can quote me on that no way Jose I'm too very chicken. sensitive here oh, hold your arm oh, out so the kids can see All right. I mean come on that's got a smart you know what I mean but look at how amazing this is the all freehand uh, that Ronan did, and you can see the detail of the guitar. You can even see Gene Simmons' chest hair, the shadow of the chains. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. This is a tattoo like nothing you've ever seen in your life. It looks like an airbrush painting. Look at Ace Freely. I mean, look at him. He's pointing at us. And up here you can see Peter Chris, and you can see him on the drum kit. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And then, of course, Paul Stanley with his own, very own tattoo on his arm, the rose, and, uh, and his famous guitars. And of course, the elbow that just takes a lot of vibration when they tattoo it. I have to laugh, you know? 
Poor kid was immobilized. He might as well have been in a cast when he was getting that done. I tried not to laugh. But yeah, Snake loves Kiss. Kiss, huh? And he yeah. loves Star Wars. And yeah. uh, and we have a lot of memorabilia that is Kiss and Star Wars. And uh, I just, I think it's more fun to live with this stuff around than it is to not live with it. That's a Kiss pinball machine yeah. in our studio. And, uh, and that's where we do a lot of the writing and, and recording of songs. And an Ace Freely guitar, too. Yeah, I got a couple of them. A couple of them. Yeah. The gold top and the sunburst. Nice. Yeah, good eye. Uh, so these are, <laughs> these are his and hers matching Hutch Trick Stars, uh, which are BMX bikes. Um, they're new. Snake ordered them from Hutch. And then uh, our buddy in Vaughn and Anthony uh, at Harvester put them together and helped design uh, some of this stuff. And... Um, you know, we love being living here in Toronto because we BMX all the time, all summer long. Uh, old school BMX is a huge, it's massively popular here. And every summer there's something called the Rad Ride. And it happens in July. And just, uh, you can look on Facebook, Old School BMX Toronto or Toronto Old School BMX. Put in whatever uh, search you want to find and you will find it. There's a Rad Ride every summer and we participate. Uh, very happily and it takes place at like you know Ellis and Lakeshore cool. and and everybody has the most amazing bikes you've ever seen. I guess yours is the pink one but I'm not going to make any judgments. Mine is the pink one. Cool. How do we get a hold of you? Online? Oh yes of course. Well I think that I started on Twitter in 2009. So I've been on Twitter a long time. It's at Biff Naked on Twitter. I'm always on there. And uh, also Instagram, same thing, you know, the pictures. Um, I'm kind of, I don't post a lot of backstage shenanigan style pictures. I kind of use Instagram a little bit more, probably like I'm supposed to use Tumblr, I'm not sure, but uh, I like doing things that are positive on social media more than anything else. I'm on Facebook also, and uh, yeah, I'm easy to find. And, uh, and send me a message, it'll reach me. Well, um Thanks for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. And uh, I know we're not doing either, but uh, that's the name of the show. So I'm proud to be on the show called Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. <laughs> Thanks, Biff Naked. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.